Hello guys and welcome to Programmers. Today I will talk about MVVM. Let's imagine that we want to build a, an app with a user interface, not just a background, a service, but a, an actual app that the user sees and interacts with. A few things we want to be able to do. We want to build it quite fast and we want to be able to test it to make sure it is stable. So we want to find kind of a middle ground between the testability and the quickness of the development. Also, we as developers, we are not so good at UI, so we want to, to be able to separate the logic of our application uh, and give the UI to some designer so uh, he can design the UI to be very user-friendly and to look very nice. So we want to be able to separate the work of a designer and the developers who implement the logic. And because we know that our application will probably change in the future, uh, we want to be able to change the user interface without actually changing the logic a lot. So we will support changing the user interface to adapt to different users, maybe uh, show different interfaces to different users, or uh, change the behavior, like not the behavior, the user interface that the same user sees if we want to change the look of our application. There are many ways to solve this problem and many patterns and today we're gonna look into the MVVM pattern. Now if you google the MVVM pattern, probably most of the results you'll find will be WPF related but you can use this pattern in many other uh, environments such as uh, web development, for example React and Angular use the same pattern to, to implement their components and in Android you can find libraries to implement the same thing. So what is MVVM? The MVVM includes inside of it three main things. The M stands for the model, the first V stands for the view, and the VM, the last VM, stands for the view model. Now before we dive into the explanations of each and every one of these, I will introduce another part which is usually uh, gets left off and confuses people when they try to understand this pattern. And this part is services. Okay, so the full application, the application that the user will get and interact with, will contain these four components. The model view and the view model is the MVM part. And you have another uh, layer which is called the services. Okay, so let's look inside each and every one of these and we'll explain their responsibilities. Let's start by explaining what model is. The model is the state of your application. It consists of objects, of different objects that contain different things and each object represents a different state of your application. Now if you look at the page, the YouTube page of the current video, you can see there are lots, lots of things around it and each of these things probably has some model represented in it. For example, the current video that is playing is like uh, an object of the video. The comments below this video is an object that uh, contains a list of comments and the description of the video is probably some property of the video object. Uh, some related videos is another object that contains a list of other objects. So the model is simply a state of our application and it consists from objects which are some of them are born inside the app itself and some of them we receive from the server okay so this is the model part let's look at a human body as an application so in our case the model will be the memories and the thoughts of a human being they are simply a state uh, of the human being the view part is all the things that the user interacts with. These are some checkboxes, some text, okay, some button, some buttons, um, I don't know, images. This is a tree with a car. Okay, images. All of these are the things that the user sees and interacts with, with the mouse and the keyboard. So these things are the view, the things that the user, the end user, sees and inter interacts with. So if you think, of, again, of a human body, 
these things are the the skin, the face, okay, the ears, the arms, the legs, the things that another person when he interacts with us he sees and he can actually touch and and receive information from it. The view doesn't have any logic, any behavior logic. It is simply also a state, a view state, a UI state of our application. It doesn't have inside of it any logic of how to uh, respond to button presses or to checkboxes or to text typing. It doesn't have any logic and it doesn't affect the model. Okay, it doesn't affect the model directly. It's only showing what it's told to show and when something happens like button press, it tells other things to do some stuff. In WPF, this thing is the XAML that you're writing and in Angular and React, these are the templates, the HTML templates that you're writing. And the final thing from the MVVM pattern is the view model. And you can think of the view model as a thing, as something that connects the view and the model. Okay, so what it actually does, it exposes some properties that flow to the view and exposes some actions that the view can uh, interact with. So for example, it, ex it can expose some uh, boolean, okay, some boolean property that can be bound to the checkbox and if it is true, it is selected and if it is false, it is not selected. It can expose a string property that can be bound to the text or the, to the text box and when the user types it or sees it, it will show the value of that string or update this value. And uh, the final thing that the view model exposes to the view is some actions. Actions. And in different languages they are called different names, but we will call them actions. And these are, you can think of them as functions that can be bound to the buttons or checkboxes. And when the state is changed, the button can invoke this action, which will notify the view model that an action should be performed. Okay, so this is the binding between the view model and view. So the view receives the view model and binds to it. And from another side, the view model changes and receives information via the services to the model. So if, for example, a button is pressed, an action is invoked, which in return invokes some service, which changes the model. And when the model is changed, another service or the same service via callback returns this information. And when a model is changed, some properties may change. Okay, so when the properties are changed, the view changes. So this is the flow in our application. You can think of the view model, if you're thinking about human, you can think of the view model being the nerve system, the muscles and the bones. Now let's see how all of these parts connect and see some flow of information and interaction with the user with two examples. One will be the human body example. So I will remind you, we think of the model as our thoughts. The view is as the skin and the eyes and the face. Okay, all of the things that you see right now, that is the view. And the view model, these are the muscles, the bones, the nerves. Okay, so let's see how all of this interacts. Oh, and the services, this is our brain. Okay, so it is not quite exactly as in the application, but we'll think that our thoughts are like wrapped around inside our brain and our brain manipulates them so our brain will be some kind of service so imagine someone comes and touches your shoulder so it is like a, a user touches and presses a button so when the user touches your shoulder okay it's like he's touching the skin which is the view okay so the skin is bound to the view model which is the nerve system and the nerve system sends information to the brain, which are the services, and they update the thoughts, which are the model. When our thoughts are updated, the model is updated, the services, the brain, send information to the muscles. Okay, so the services send information to the muscles, and the muscles are our view model. The muscles 
update the properties that they expose and the properties are the bones so the muscles move our bones okay the exposed properties are the bones and they move it and the skin because it is bound to our bones the skin updates its state as well so as a result of someone touching your skin all of this happens and the view model updates the bones and the skin uh, receives this information and moves as well so as a result you are now looking to your left to see who touched your shoulder now let's see the same example using a software so imagine we have a like button below this video okay so uh, this is a like button okay so now a user is pressing you are pressing the like button so the like button sends an action okay it uses the action that the view model exposes and sends the view model information that someone pressed this like button the view model uses likes service okay and updates the model and the model can contain Two properties for example is liked and num likes okay so is liked is simply stating whether this video was liked by you and number of likes is the total number of likes this video got so after the model is changed the same service or different one doesn't really matter can send a notification to the view model that our model is changed. When the view model receives this information, it updates two properties that are exposed to the view. One property is is liked. Okay, is video liked? And another property is num of likes. Okay? So, when these properties are updated, the view which is bound to them is changing. So now the like symbol is getting colored which means it is pressed and the number of likes is updated from being I don't know what it is now let's assume you're the first one who liked this video so it updates from 0 to be 1 so this is the flow when you're using the MVVM model of your information and of your changes in the model and the view and the view model. So now let's see how this pattern solves the problems that we wanted to solve at the beginning of this video. So one of the problems we wanted to solve is to separate the design from the implementation logic of our application. So imagine you draw a line here, okay, and all the part to the left is the responsibility of the developer of you and the right part okay it is the responsibility of some designer all you need to agree is this layer which you can think as an interface of the view model you need to agree on the exposed properties you need to agree on the exposed actions and you need to agree what ha what should happen when an action is invoked which properties represent what and after you agree on that the designer may implement some UI okay to that interface and you may implement some logic to that same interface now if you want to change the UI in the future okay all you need to do is update this part the view part and all of this things to the left they shouldn't change so for example if you want to update a rating from being simply a number that that is one two three four or five simply a number you can change it pretty simply to being like some star system with five stars okay and uh, depending on the number selected some stars will be glowing will be yellow and some stars will be transparent so this can be done without changing the left part the view model the services in the model without changing the logic all you need to do is update the ui and the final thing that we will be able to do is to test this left part without even needing some ui we will not need to spin up real application with ui we can mock the behavior of the user by 
Like for example, if a user presses a button, we can simulate it by invoking this action. And to see what user will get, like if the text will be displayed properly or if the checkbox will be selected, all we need to do is simply uh, look at these exposed properties. If they are in proper state, we can count on it that the binding will be proper. Like it is not 100% testability. For example, someone may implement the view and forget to bind some stuff, but the logic is properly implemented and you can check it. And this really, really, really removes risk of some bugs getting inside your logic. Okay, so it is not 100% tested, but it is pretty good. Now, one thing that I didn't talk about is how this connection is done. How is this binding between the view and the view model is done? Well, it depends on your uh, language and your libraries that you're using. For example, if you're writing in WPF, it comes built in inside the language itself. Okay. And if you're using, for example, a library, which is React or Angular, it is built into the library itself. But if, for example, you're using Android to do it, there are some libraries that uh, allow you to, to implement this binding. Basically, to do it, okay, it doesn't matter where you're doing it, you need to notify and update the view when some of these properties are changing. So there are two approaches. One approach is raising an event. If, like, for example, this property is liked, is changed, an event is raised, the view is signed to this event, and when you receive this event, it updates the value. This is one approach. This is the approach that, for example, WPF uses. Another approach is if something changes here, the view looks it up and updates all of its view, and depending on the new state. Uh, it can do it with some diff, like, for example, we saves the old state and looks at the new state. So this approach is exactly what React and Angular do. They when something changes in this layer, they expect it and check what have changed and update the view. You have watched an episode about MVVM. Let me know what you think about it by leaving a comment in the comment section down below. You can watch more architecture videos by clicking over here or you can trust YouTube to know what you really want to see and click over here. If you want to watch more code related videos, check out my channel and feel free to subscribe. See you later on ProgramArkist.